All right, hey everybody. So in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to use a color sensor in order to follow a line like so. When we're done, it will follow that straight line and then it will curve around and I'm going to grab it before it falls um, off of my desk to its certain peril. So let's go about and see how we can program this. So I am back in my tutorial.ev3 and as always I'm going to make a new program and I will call this one line follower. And if I plug in my robot, which I should start to remember to do, there we go. I had to edit that. There was it was tough finding it behind that huge heap of wires. So if I plug it in right there, we can see that there is a sensor value right here, and there are three different ways that you can measure. Uh, things with your light sensor. You can measure the color, the reflected light intensity, or the ambient light intensity. And what the reflected light intensity will do is it will shine a light, you can see it right here, um, on to the ground and then it will measure how much light bounces back up. And depending on your surface, it will be more or less reflected off of that surface. So if I go all the way over on top of this yellow line, you can see that it's at 52, 53. And if I go back here off the line, you can see that it goes all the way down to 34, 35. So we are going to use this knowledge in order to kind of help us keep a healthy medium right in the middle so that if it is over the center of the line and it's up there at 54, we wanna tell it to turn back right. And if it is over the pure table and it's down to 32, we want it to turn back to the left. And if it is in that nice little happy zone, we are going to just have it go straight. So there's two different ways that we can do this. And there's kind of a simpler way that is easier to pick up, but isn't quite as effective, especially when we have curves like we do on this right here. And then there is a more complex way that, although it's a bit more difficult to program, in the end it pays off with greater flexibility and greater accuracy when you want to follow certain lines. So if you want to just skip ahead to the more complex one, you could just click on the little box, right? I'm not really sure where it is yet because I haven't put it in there, but there is a box saying click ahead and you can click on there and it will take you to the more complex one but I'm going to start with this simple one. And you will see that it is going to be very similar to the Wallflower program that we uh, made in the previous tutorial, if you happen to do that one. So I'm gonna go over to my sensor block and I wanna get the color sensor out. And I wanna make sure right now it's on measure color and I wanna go down to measure reflected light intensity. And then just like before, I want to get my range block out because I want it to be in a certain range. And right now, if I put it over about halfway, it's about 46. So let's say I want anywhere from 50 to 43. I want it to go straight. So I need to take my data wire and I need to pump it into there. So it will read the sensor. It will take that value and then it will pass it into the range block. And if it is in between uh, 43 or 50, it will return true. If it is outside of that range, it will return false into our Boolean block there. And now I wanna to go to my switch. I'm just gonna switch the tab for uh, sakes, uh, just looks better, it's easier to play with. And I'm gonna go down here and I wanna switch it to logic. And I'm gonna pass that Boolean data wire into there. And so now if this is true, whatever is inside of here will execute. So I am going to go to move steering. Actually, I'm gonna take it out of here for now. And I'm just gonna turn this on and I'm gonna put it at 20. So it's nice and slow so we can uh, manipulate it easier. And if it is outside of that range, just for now, I'm gonna turn the motor off. 
So let's, and then I want to make sure it's always checking for this. So I'm going to put it inside of a forever loop like that. And let's try this out. So when I press play, if it is in that certain range, it should go forward. And if it's outside of that range, the motor is just going to turn off. So let's press play. And it's not in that range. If I go this way, oh, there we go. It goes straight. And then it's out of that range. It stops. And there, like that. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to stop it. Now we want it. I'm going to get rid of this because we don't want it stopping the motor every time it is not in that range. But if I were to go over to the right here, you can see that it is getting lower and lower and lower. So if it is lower than 43, I want it to turn a little bit to the left. Not too much because it would be it would just go too violently and it would miss the yellow and we don't want that. So ever so slightly, I'm going to check for this again. I'm going to get my color sensor. This time I'm going to use the compare block just like in my previous tutorial. And I'm going to pass that in. And if it is we say less than 43, then I'm going to switch this to tab. I'm also going to switch this to tab to make it easier to read. Go to my logic. If it is less than 43, that is true. And we want it to turn a little to the left. Let's say negative 10. That's good. A good value and let's slow it down to 20 and then we just want to do this again for if it is in the middle of the line we want it to turn right so I'm just going to copy this right here that, that go? Nah. Nah. Uh, I'll just have to put the other one in manually it's been tricky all right, so if it is greater than 50, then and there, you could use this little zoom feature. Then I want it to go on, and I want it to turn 10 to the right at 20 speed. So let's check what this does. Uh, forever, it is always checking three different conditions. It is measuring from the color, uh, from the reflected light intensity. If it is in between 43 and 50, it says this is true. And if this is true, it will go straight at 20. Now, I made a mistake here. For the sensor block, I used the color sensor, and that's not what we want. It will not work. I want to measure reflected light intensity. So now I need to pass it in there again. If the reflected light intensity is less than 43, then it will make this true. And if this is true, and only if this is true, it will turn to the left. I'm going to switch this one again to reflected light intensity, and I'm going to pass that in again. Now, if the reflected light intensity is greater than 50, then this condition is true. It passes that Boolean value into there, and then this condition runs, and only if this is true. So we have three different Booleans, and only if they are true, they will run. So in theory, when I press play, this will go straight following the line. Let's see how it works. Perfect. And if I were to go back here, have it go a little bit off, it will move back in there. And it will straighten out once it gets to the line. If I start here, it will straighten out once it gets to the line. Now, you can see the problem with this. And that is that it works well on a straight line. It's a simple program that will follow a straight line. The only problem is once we start to get to turns, and let's say we want to do like we want a sharper turn than that, or we want to change how sharply it goes around. Um, we're going to make a new program for that. So, should I completely get rid of this? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get rid of this one. Select my other one back. 
whoops, I still want the play button there. So we're going to have just three blacks here. And we're going to have the sensor, making sure I switch it to reflect the light intensity this time. We are going to use the math black, and we are going to use the move steering set just to on. And you can see that the steering block, if you move it over to the right, it always has a numeric value. So the higher the numeric value, the more it turns. And if we were to go to the left, it will be negative. So we are going to use this knowledge in order to help us manipulate the steering with math. So I want to go to my advanced math feature and this is a really useful feature and all it basically does is plug in these values for A, B, C, and or D. So right now A plus B uh, minus C times D. That we, we would do C minus D or C times D first because it's order of operation multiplication. So that would be zero, one plus two minus zero equals two. So this right here, if we, oh, we'd have to play it, but this output right here would be two. And you could change these operations to be whatever you want. And you could change these values to be whatever you want. So I am going to change this for now to be just A minus B. And I'm gonna put these in parentheses because we're going to need it later. So what A is going to be is it is going to be my target value. So if I'm about halfway over like I am now, that is 44, all right? That is my ideal position. That is where I want it going. So I'm gonna plug that into there. Then I am going to subtract whatever the value is that gets plugged in here. So now if I go a little to the right here, that is down to 37, 44 minus 37 equals seven. So if we plug this into here, this is now going to be turning at seven, which is a little bit to the right. But we have a problem here. This will work on this side where if it's a little over here, it will be seven and it will turn to the right. But I don't want that. I want it over here, which is why we're going to have one more feature over here. So if I do this, A minus B in parentheses multiplied by C. Now, if we have this at one, it will be just normal. However, if we multiply it by negative one, it will reverse it. So now if I have 44 minus 37, or if I was over here, what I put it way over there minus 35, that's nine, times negative one, that's negative nine, and the negatives always turn to the left, which is what I want here. And the good thing about this is that it's proportional, so if it's just a little bit off, it will just turn a little bit. If it's a lot off, it will turn more. So if I put all of this into a forever loop, and I press play, it will measure the, uh, it will measure the reflected light intensity and that will be subtracted from my target value. And then just so I could reverse it and the right and left is going the right way, I will multiply it by negative one. And then that result right there will be plugged into my steering. And ideally my steering will be zero, so it will go straight. Now let's try this out. <laughs> that was quicker than I expected, but it worked. Let's try that one more time. Perfect. And it goes off there, and you can see that it still does not follow that line. So what can we do about this? When I put in this multiplication right here, it had the effect of being able to switch it from left to right. Uh, but it also has a, another effect. Let's say I want this to turn sharper. Like that's just, this is not doing it. It's just, it turns a little bit, but it's not sharp enough. 
we can increase this number and then it will turn sharper and sharper from being away a from a much smaller value so if let's use the example from before let's try this if it's at 37 we have 44 minus 37 which is 7 right now multiplied by negative 1 it will turn at negative 7 towards here but if we were to change this to 2 negative 2 now it will turn at negative 14 which is twice as strong if we change this to negative 3 it will turn at negative 21 so the higher we make this, the sharper it will turn. If you start to turn it a lot, it'll get really finicky, but it will always follow that line. So let's try this out at negative three and see if it works. See, it'll turn a lot sharper, perfect. And you can see, because we have that uh, that multiplier right there that increases the amount that it turns, we are now able to manipulate our lines however we want. And even though I, I, it's conceptually this is a bit more difficult than the one that I showed you before, in the end, I think this will be much uh, stronger for you to use and you'll be able to manipulate it in many more ways. So I hope that was a helpful tutorial on how to follow a line. And also just how to use data wires in order to have your programs be proportional. So you could use this for the wallflower that we did before, or you could use it for many other things like we did here. Uh, so in our next tutorial, we'll start to move into the gyro sensors, which can also be very useful in order to help your turns be very accurate. So I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time. Later.